Look at this setup right over here, especially the program that I have open, which is NWG Look, as well as Waybot. Okay, seen that? Now let me switch to the other one. There you go. Immediately, you can notice a huge difference. Same colors, same layout, same gaps, same bar, same everything. The only difference is the font. One looks amateur and the other looks professional. And that's how much fonts matter. They're the single fastest way to make your setup look polished and intentional. And almost nobody gets them right. In the next nine minutes, I'm going to be showing you all how to install fonts on Hyperland. The exact fonts that I use, as well as the mistakes that are making your setup look worse than it should. Now, the first thing, fonts are everywhere on your setup, okay? Your bar, your terminal, your app launcher, right here, your notifications, as well as every GTK app from this one to your browser, because your browser is also written in GTK. Every config file and basically every piece of text you read is all rendered in a font. Most people treat fonts as an afterthought. They use whatever comes as default, something like Noto Sans or, or Dwighter Sans, and they just don't give it much thought at all. Perhaps they pick something that just looks cool without thinking about whether it actually works. But fonts are the difference between professional and amateur. A rounded, geometric sans set of font feels modern and clean, like the one that I have right over here. If I were to show you that inside of NWG Look, the one that I've currently chosen is Google Sans Flex Regular. A thin, wispy font, on the other hand, just feels fragile and cheap. A heavy font feels bold but can overwhelm everything else. The font you choose is making a statement whether you intend it to or not, so you might as well be intentional about it. Now here's the good news. Getting fonts right is easy once you know what you're doing, and Google Fonts gives you access to thousands of options completely free. So let's get fonts installed. You basically want to go over to fonts.google.com and find the font that you want, so let's just do that here. Okay, I have Google Fonts open. Now the font that I'm going to be picking is going to be Google Sans, as you have just seen from the bar, as well as the GTK app, whichever one that I open, okay? Now let's go here and look for Google Sans. Especially Google Sans Flex and Google Sans, these fonts were recently open source. It's the font that Google uses on Pixels running Android 16, and it's clean, professional, and modern, which is perfect as a workhorse Sans Serif. Now, once you have found your font, you have to basically click on it, click on get font and download the family. Once you do that, you're going to have to place it inside of any directory of your choice. Okay, then you just have to unzip that folder and eventually you will get a folder, something like this. So let's go to downloads, Google Sans, Google Sans Flex, as you can see here. So let's go in there. And as you see here, okay, if I just list the contents of this directory, you're going to find a .ttf file. Now, TTF basically stands for true type font. This is one of the variants or one of the formats in which fonts can come under, okay? You have OTF, which stands for open type font, or you have TTF, you have WAF2, and you have a couple of others, but the one that we have right now is a TTF font file. Now, you might be wondering, why is there only one font file? Aren't there supposed to be way more? Well, you would be right, except this is a variable font. And as you can probably just into it, right? A variable font contains all the different sizes, weights, and different italic forms if it exists for a particular font, all in one particular file, which is why it's four megabytes in size. If, however, you wanted to view the individual files for whatever reason, and say you wanted to import some and not import the others, if I show you the static directory, as you can see, all of these TTF files are 128 kilobyte files, which are basically different styles and sizes of the font itself okay now because gtk can actually support displaying variable fonts and then support using the font and all of its different styles okay without having to copy individual files like this we'll be using this variable font now once you have this variable font right in here you basically want to create a directory in dot local okay in x dot local share Oh, local share fonts ttf and here you're going to make a directory called google sans flex or whichever is the font that you chose now there are two places where you can make this directory okay if you want it to be specific to a given user let's say you're only using one user and you don't really care about making it system wide which means that it's not going to be accessible to the root user if in case you are performing any sort of graphical tasks on that particular user okay then that's totally fine you can do that right over here. If, however, you want your 
Foreign file to be accessible to literally every single application, doesn't matter which one or what user is accessing it. Then you have to make sure to put your font files inside of user local share fonts. User local share fonts. Here I have a couple inside of OTF. I have SF, the SF font family, which is going to be from Apple, which also looks pretty nice. Apart from OTF, in TTF, we have Rubik. That's the only thing that's in user local share fonts. So decide where you're going to put the folder and make the folder. And once you do, just copy over Google Sans Flex. You can just hit tab to auto complete and then just copy it over to home slash dot local share dot local comma dot local share fonts TTF and then just paste it inside of your font directory name. Okay, once you do that, you're basically done. Just open NWG look if you haven't already installed. It's going to be with yay dash s NWG look. That's going to install this program for you, which allows you to change your GTK theme as well as your default font. So just click on default font, find your favorite font here, the one that you just installed. Right now, I'm still using Google Sans Flex regular, as you can see, so that's fun. And if you want to get it to look exactly like this, there's a couple of other things that you have to do apart from just switching the font. First thing is going to have to be setting the size to 11. This display right now is set to 1920 by 1080 which means that 11 looks pretty sweet. And as for the waybar, I will get to that in just a second. But for now, just make sure to set the default font size to be 11, Google Sans Flex regular. Now, as for the other font settings, basically click on font tab over here. And now what you want to do is change font anti-aliasing to RGBA. Most likely it'll be something like grayscale, which is meant to be used on LCD displays. This is an IPS panel, okay? Yeah, those things might be different. My, I might be getting my monitor terminologies mixed up anyway. It might be something like none or grayscale. You want to change that to RGBA. And as for font RGBA order, you want to make that to be RGB because most displays are going to have the RGBA order to be RGB basically. So you have the red pixels on top, green pixels in the middle and blue pixels on the bottom, not anything else. Or the, yeah. Now as for the font hinting, okay, you can either choose slight if you want to really shape up the font, but be careful because if you put this to full, what's going to happen is you will start seeing fringing at the edges of the text. Okay, it seems like something has changed and you might not be able to point your finger at it right away if you're not used to seeing fonts and observing them like this. But basically, hinting is adding a bunch of math instructions and doing lots of complicated font stuff in order to make the font align to a grid, align to the pixel grid that is on your monitor. Basically, if you zoom right in with a microscope onto your display, you're going to find that it's made up of a bunch of pixels. Now, what hinting tries to do is it tries to align this particular font or any font really to align as well as it can to those particular pixels. Because of which sometimes what can happen is you're going to observe that there are slight purpley things at the edges of characters and text, which depending on your preference might either help with the font looking sharper and more aligned to the grid or just might look hideous. In which case, you are going to have to try it out on your own. Now, me personally, I would either go with something like slight or none because I do not like seeing text fringing. Okay, but that's up to you. You can choose whichever one that you want. Now, none, on the other hand, looks pretty sweet for me, so I'm going to keep it like this. Now, we've installed the fonts and we've applied them, but that's only for GTK apps. Now, let's do that for the rest of the apps as well. I'm using Waybar right here, so it's going to be pretty simple to actually install this for Waybar too. Let's do that. Let's go to config, Waybar style. CSS. So let's just close this. We'll go style.css. And now what you want to do is just make sure you're picking the universal selector. Okay, go to your waybar style.css file, add in this asterisk. This asterisk is basically a universal selector in CSS, which basically means take every single element that you find and then apply the styles in enclosed in these curly braces to that. So all the other stuff when it comes to borders that I've done so that I can basically get it to look the way that it is. As for the font, what we're doing is just setting the font to Google Sans Flex. And this one, this I'm going to explain in just a second, but make sure that you choose your font here, change the font size to your favorite and the font weight as well to make sure that the font doesn't look fragile and breakable and instead looks like something that you can actually read. Okay, that is for Waybar. Now for Rafi, let's say, if you're using Rafi, right now it's still using the old font, which is SF Pro Text. Here's how I would change that. Just go to config, not config Rafi, but it depends on how you actually install Rafi. There's this one repository on GitHub which contains a lot of Rafi themes, and if you install it using that repository, some, okay, yeah. If you just install it using that one, that would be inside config Rafi 
launchers and this launcher over here. Now, I am trusting you to be able to know how to actually change the font if you have installed something like that off of GitHub. So good luck with that. However, if you have your own config that's somewhere inside of .local share Rafi, that I will show you how you can change properly. So grid.rossi is going to be this thing right here. There's also minimal, which is going to be this thing. And this minimal menu is basically a menu that I've created or a theme that I've created, which basically allows me to change the wallpaper, <laughs> not the wallpaper, but I mean the theme. Let's say I wanted to change the wallpaper. That's going to be wallpapers.rossi. And I can do that here as well, which is pretty sweet. Oh, and if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, a custom theme switcher like this one, where all you have to do is just choose your favorite theme from a list of your favorite themes. And what's going to happen is basically the entire setup is going to adapt to that particular theme. As you can see over here, that is exactly what's happening. Now I can, let's just put this to the side so you can see what's going on. Okay. Now let's say I wanted to choose a theme like Tokyo Night. I just have to select that. And as you can see, the colors change immediately. Let's say I wanted to change the wallpaper. I just have to pick my favorite wallpaper from a bunch of different ones. And as you can see, that would work fantastically as well. So if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, finally stop chasing after the latest new dot files and stop breaking your setup. You can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's a program where I have combined my knowledge of over four years of rising Hyperland so that it's going to be very easy for you to rise Hyperland without having to copy anybody's dot files. In this theme switches module, for example, which is over two hours long, okay, as you can see here, I explain what theme switchers actually are, and I also show you the code and writing it line by line somewhere here, as you can see. So if you want to learn how to make setups like this one yourself, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. Now let's just keep this, let's open minimal and let's change the font here. Just want to change the font to to which one's this? Google Sans text. Google Sans text. And as you can see, that has changed the font. Or rather, that has not changed the font because we're going to have to log out and log back in. Maybe it's Google Sans text. Oh no, it's Google Sans flex. I'm still, wow, okay. There you go, Google Sans flex, and it looks pretty sweet. The entire setup is just starting to look like something that's been designed by Google, even though it has not. It might have certain inspiration from the design principles, like something like this thing, for example, but apart from that, it's not really much else. And despite that being the case, just changing the font, if it's giving this much of a difference, then yeah, that's literally how much of a difference fonts actually make. Now, as for the rest, let, let me just revert this because I actually do like SF Pro Text. And I'm going to be switching the font in my bar and my apps later on, but I just wanted to show you how you can do it with Google Sans text. Now, as for the last thing, the mistakes which are keeping your setup amateur. Let's talk about what goes wrong, okay? The first mistake that you might be making is choosing the wrong font weight. You install a font and then you use it. Great, that's amazing. But something looks off. The text looks thin and fragile, like it literally might blow away. And there's fringing of the text, which is basically purpley stuff around the edges of certain characters, glyphs, if you will. This usually means that you're using a weight that's too light for the size you're displaying it at. Light and thin weights look elegant at large sizes, headlines and titles. At small sizes like 11 or 12 pixels in your bar, they really become hard to read and look weak, especially like the one that I showed you in my first screenshot. So for UI text, stick with regular or medium weight, save light and thin for big display text where they can actually breathe. This alone will make your setup look that much sharper. Then the second mistake would be a different font for every context. Now there's one font in your bar, there's another in your terminal, another in Rafi, another in GTK apps, four different fonts, four different personalities, and there would be zero cohesion in that case. Your setup looks like it was assembled from different rices instead of actually designed as one. That's the opposite of pro, of professional. The, the fix is simple, okay? Just pick one sans serif UI uh, font and one monospace font for code and terminal. Apply them consistently and that's it, you're done. Two fonts, maximum for most setups. The third mistake is, is choosing a wrong nerd font variant. Nerd fonts come in three variants, okay? You have the normal nerd font, you have nerd font mono, and then you have nerd font proper. They're not interchangeable. If you're using a nerd font for icons in Waybar and you choose the regular nerd font variant, your icon spacing is going to be completely messed up. I've made a video detailing this much, much clearly, okay? If you want, you can check that one out. But yeah, your spacing is basically going to be messed up. You'll have to hack around with it 
with literal space characters, which completely ruins the look. Now, for Waybar and UI context, use the proper variant of the nerd font, the proportional variant. It's meant to be used in proportional contexts, which basically means contexts where you are not using a monospaced font, but instead a sans serif font. It handles icon spacing correctly, and so you won't have to deal with having to manually space the icons using spaces. For your terminal, use a nerd font mono. In a terminal, you want monospace, right? You want every character the same width. The regular nerd font variant has differently sized icons, which throws off alignment and looks inconsistent. This one is using a mono font, so as you can see, all of the icons in niche over here are perfectly aligned and perfectly the same size. So, nerd font proper for UI, NF mono, basically a nerd font mono for terminal. Get this right and you will never fight with icon spacing again. The fourth mistake is using display fonts for body text. See, display fonts and decorative fonts are designed for headlines, okay? Big text, attention grabbing moments. When you use them for body text, your bar, your configs in your terminal, they become unreadable because they're not designed for small sizes or for extended reading. This is actually the reason why pretty much every single novel that's in publication out there that's actually being printed uses a serif font because it's easier on the eye. Just imagine trying to read a novel using a sans serif font, using a, the font that you would use for UI. Your eyes would probably start hurting and you wouldn't be able to read it as much. And not just that, but it would just lose that novel feel. The novel would literally no longer feel novel, even though they're kind of old if you're reading old ones. If a font looks cool and funky, it's probably a display font. So keep it for titles if you use it at all. For everything else, just use, use something designed for readability. Professional setups prioritize legibility. Now. Here's what I personally use, okay? For sans serif, anything UI related, I would use SF Protex. It's been my go-to font pretty much since I started rising. I've always been in love with Apple's design. And honestly, you might hate them for, you know, their practices when it comes to just selling stuff and whatnot. But honestly, you have to give them credit where it's deserved. And that is especially when it comes to their UI. They've done that well. So SF Pro text for anything UI related, although now I just change it to Google Sans to show you. It's clean, it's geometric, and it's modern, and it's the kind of font that Apple would use. And it's literally what they do use. It works at small sizes, and it works at large sizes, and it looks professional without being boring. For monospace, terminal uncovered, anything that needs fixed width, I use Geist Mono Nerd font, specifically the mono variant for terminal use. It has more personality than JetBrains Mono while still being perfectly readable. And the nerd font version means that I get any icons that I need without any extra configuration. So that's it. Two fonts applied consistently everywhere. You don't need 10 fonts. You need two good ones and the discipline to use them everywhere. That discipline is what makes a setup look professional. And if you want to see how all of this fits into building a complete cohesive setup, that is exactly what I cover inside of Hyper Accelerator. So if you want to learn that, as well as learn how to make custom theme switchers like this one, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.